Hello. Today we are going to talk about an area from where you will get a lot of questions. Yesterday we had come up to the 17th century. Today we are going to talk about the Augustan period. Like this we will quickly cover British literature and then we will together do all the other literatures, criticism theory, everything that is needed for NETS. Fakka, NETS study plan, ek mahine ka. And with us here today is our sweet little Ankita Gangli. Hello she everyone, hi. She used to study in JNU. She was for a long time our student at Vallat. And now she's a teacher and she is reading for research, preparing for research. So Ankita and me are going to take you to the PPT on Augustine age. This is, oh my God, the third day, guys. Isko hame 30 banana hai. 30, wow. You will study so much. Whatever we study here in our 9 p.m. live, you should read extra. Okay, very good. And you can join our Telegram group. I will give you the PDF. First question to you. Identify the correct statement. Deco. The term Augustine refers to literature and art of the 18th century. Sahi lagta hai. It is correct. It was a period of literary excellence. Like that of the period of Augustus Caesar. Correct hai na? Yes. Maybe this one is wrong. They go. Augustine poetry was concerned with the development of an elegant style, precision of expression and decorum. What is decorum? Decorum is appropriate, appropriateness. Ayo, Ankita. Looks like A, B, C are correct. What do you think, Ankita? Yeah, I think all are true. Okay, all are true. So there are three correct statements. That is by way of introduction. Now, dear friends, we move on to the second question. The Augustan period was the period of the four Georges. Contact four Georges, George Clooney. Then, <laughs> then which George? Nehi. These are four King Georges. George the first, King George the first, King George the second, King George the third, King George the fourth. Who gave a series of lectures on the four Georges? The four Georges are Hanoverian kings. Can you recognize this man? Is it Mulkraj Anand? No. Then is it Thackeray, Dickens, Charles Kingsley, Wilkie Collins? Thackeray's cousins are there in Bombay, isn't it? In Mumbai, it is Thackeray. Not Bal Thackeray, but William Makepeace Thackeray. Okay, did you know guys, William Makepeace Thackeray was born in India? Hmm. Many writers, British writers of the 19th century were born in India. Even George Orwell, isn't it? Yes. That question can come. Who of the following was not born in India? So Thackeray gave a series of lectures on the Hanoverian period. The Hanoverian period is a period of great tolerance and moderation. It was a time of uh, values and decorum, urban values. So Thackeray gave a famous lecture called The Four Georges. All right, guys. Next, moving on. Who among the following was not a member of the Kit Kat Club? Remember, the Kit Kat Club was a group of Whigs. There were also Scribblerus Club members. They were largely Tories. Do you know, Ankita, who among the following were not was not a member of Kit Kat Club? Is it Robert Walpole? William I think it was Pope. Really? Yeah. Alexander Pope is correct. Robert Walpole, William Congreve, and Joseph Edison. They were all, even Richard Steele, Jacob Thompson. They, they were all members of Kit Kat Club. Okay. Pope, Swift, they were members of Scriblerus Club. 
scriblerianism was the uh, you know philosophy of the scribblerus club the scribblerus club members wrote Ma, uh, you know, under the pseudonym Martinus Scriblerus. Scriblerianism aimed at attacking modern learning, false learning. Scriblerus Club praised the ancients. Will you remember, guys? Yes. You two babies, if you liked the video, press the like button and also share with your friends uh, so that we can get more people to join us to do this amazing activity. Who among the following? undertook the production of encyclopedia or dictionnaire raison, the sciences, the arts, et des metiers. I don't know how to reach French. I'm just mis mispronouncing everything. <laughs> no problem. Frenchmen can't even say my name clearly. So no problem. I will learn later. Hmm. So who undertook the production of this massive book? You know the importance of encyclopedia? Encyclopedia rewrote everything according to reason and science. They go reason and science. Even muscle or eyes or um, table, things like that were defined in a very religious manner before. It is the enlightenment people uh, who, who wrote the encyclopedia who really rewrote everything, defined everything in a very scientific manner. Is it Kant, Diderot, Erasmus, who wrote the encyclopedia? It was Dennis Diderot. It was Dennis Diderot who produced the encyclopedia. Did you know, guys, at first there were lots of people contributing to the encyclopedia. The government did not take any notice. But finally, about 100 contributors were there. And you know what happened? Government cracked down on them. They had to go into hiding. This happened during the Enlightenment, 17th, 18th century. All right. Saper Ode. There is something similar in India. I will tell you after you say the answer. It was the motto of the philosophical movement of Enlightenment. Saper Ode. What does this Latin phrase mean? Dare to rule. Mm, can maybe write, right? Dare to know. Dare to call. Uh, <laughs> dare to stay. <laughs> what do you think is the answer, Ankita? Maybe? Maybe? I think it's dare to know. Oh, correct. Saper Ode means dare to know. You know, in Q shop, we made a t-shirt called DTK. DTK means dare to know. DTK. <laughs> and you know, guys, Uttishtada, Jagrada, Prapyavaran. You know, remember Vivekananda? Vivekananda's slogan, same thing. Dare to know. That is what he also said. Uttishtada Jagrada Prapyavaran Nibotada, something like that. Yeah. Got it. Now, this verse essay, you have to identify the verse essay written by this turbaned young man. Who is this turbaned young man? This man wrote a verse essay. YouTube is going crazy. YouTube babies are going crazy answering. This verse essay is written in three parts in heroic couplets. In a Horatian tone, it's a Horatian satire, laughing at people out of their follies. Juvenalian satire attacks people, whereas Horatian satire laughs at people. And this man, this turbaned young man said, follow nature. That means you have to follow human nature. Which work is this? Of course, it is Alexander Pope. And it is an essay on criticism. An essay on criticism, isn't it, Ankita? Yes, it is an essay on criticism. Tring. Dekho, do you know the year in which it was published, Ankita? No, I'm very bad in years. I'm very bad in years. Don't say that. You two babies will learn from you. You should not say I'm very bad in years. You should say I will take more effort. Yes. Remember, yes. remember it's easy. I will teach you. Uh, yeah. Like I used to teach you before. 1709 pastorals. Two years later, you have to visually remember. Two years later, essay on criticism in 1711. 1713, Windsor Forest. Before that, in 1712, rape of the lock in two cantos. 
After that, in 1714, rape of the lock in five cantos. Till now, Bolo, 1709 pastorals. 1711, essay on criticism. 1712, the rape of the lock. In two cantos. Yes. 1713, Windsor Forest. Ah, Windsor Forest. 1714. Rape of the Lock in Five Cantos. Yes, Rape of the Lock in Five Cantos. Till now, you remember? Yeah. So you're not bad in years, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are very young in years, okay? <laughs> that is the only relation you have with years, okay? Now, 1709, Pastoral. 1711. An essay on criticism. 1712. The uh, Rape of the Lock in Two Cantos. Two for two candles. 17, yes. one, two for two candles. Okay. And 1713. Windsor Forest. Oh, Friday the 13th. Ghosts are there in Windsor Forest. Okay. And then 1714. Rape of the Lock in Five Cantos. Hmm. Rape of the Lock in Five Cantos. Which are the three great poems written by uh, Pope? The magnum opus of Pope. An essay on man. An essay on man. Moral essays. Moral essays. And fancied. An essay on man. Moral essays. And the Dunciad. Dunciad. Yeah. Dunciad was also rewritten. It was first written in 1728. Rewritten in 1743. Okay. You can remember like that. All right. Next question. Pope's Royalist Pastoral, Windsor Forest, 1713. It was dedicated to whom? Is it Joseph Edison? No, Pope was at first friends with Joseph Edison. Later they quarreled. Joseph called him Atticus in epistle to Dr. Arbuthnot. Is it Dr. Arbuthnot? Is it George Granville? Vokon, eh? Maybe that is the answer. Or is it Jonathan Swift? Why would they say George Granville's name? Maybe that is the answer, Ankita. What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, George Granville was the one. Yeah. <laughs> Windsor Forest was dedicated to George Granville. Okay? Remember that. You see my artless joy at your approach. I sigh, I faint, I tremble at your touch. Is it love poem, Ankita? And in your absence, all the world I shun. I hate mankind and curse the cheering sun. These are all written by a woman about something. You will be surprised to know what it is. Why have I put this picture here? Is it the picture of London? Ankita, do you think it is London? The answer? I think it's Town Eclogues by Lady Mary Wortley Montague. Oh, you are right. It is Town Eclogues by Lady Mary Wortley Montague. Amazing. Did you know, guys, Eclogues were originally written about countryside, pastoral themes. But in the 18th century, Matthew Pryor, John Gay, Lady Mary Wortley Montague, all of them wrote Town o'clock. That is why I put the picture of a town here. Okay. Okay. Who among the following? Who is this man who looks like me? You know, I'm also looking like him. Who among the following was associated with the newspaper? A review of the affairs of France. Are ya, review to Daniel Defoe Katha. A review of the affairs of France. Kya hai? You two babies. Can you guess? Ankita is looking like she knows the answer. No, this time you two babies will say the answer. Who is this man with a pretty wig? It is Daniel Defoe only. Daniel Defoe's A Review was originally called A Review of the Affairs of France. At that time, originally it was called A Review of the Affairs of France. Because he was talking about something that nobody did at that time. To talk about France. In an English newspaper. Will you remember Ankita this? Yes. Who among the following has written about the great plague of 1665? Oh, yo, dekho na. 
there are so many people dying and dead bodies are carried in carts who wrote about the great plague of 1665 main batati hu it is daniel defo the name of the book is journal of the plague year the journal a journal of the plague year theek hai okay about which of his works did swift comment what a genius i had when i wrote that book i have given you the clue in the picture is it the battle of the books a tale of a tub a modest proposal or gulliver's travels ankita i think it's a tale of a tub this ankita knows everything clever girl ankita it is a tale of a tub indeed remember there is a bishop scene here a tale of a tub is what the only religious allegory by jonathan swift will you remember that theek hai in a tale of a tub what is happening three sons are getting a coat each from their father the father gives strict instructions do not do anything unnecessary to the coat use it properly chodo these sons go and misuse the coat they change the coat they misuse the coat that is the coat is christianity the coat stands for christianity all right and do you know ankita one book by jonathan swift came as the prologue to a tale of a tub can you tell me the name of that book no ah ah okay i'll give you a clue uh you two babies know this book that came as a prologue to a tale of a tub is set in the royal library of st james ah the battle of the books yes don't forget so easily okay great the purpose of which work among the following according to swift was to vex the world rather than divert it he wanted to vex the world to torture the world is it drapier's letters gulliver's travels cato or a modest proposal drapier's letters is a group of seven pamphlets against uh the introduction of a copper coin gulliver's travels everybody knows gulliver's travels was published in 1726 isn't it and it has four books isn't it yes it is a satire and allegory isn't it and cato is a roman tragedy a modest proposal is a satire where he says irish people if you don't know how to take care of yourselves sell your children as food to the english he even talks about how to fatten the children to sell them as food so horrendous isn't it yeah so what is the answer do you think ankita i think it's gulliver's travels amazing girl you said it it is gulliver's travels that he wrote to vex the world rather than divert it who said it was said of socrates that he brought philosophy down from heaven to inhabit among men and i shall be ambitious to have it said of me that i have brought philosophy out of closets and libraries schools and colleges to dwell in clubs and assemblies at tea tables in coffee houses from the pedestal philosophy is coming to everyday life he wrote essays in the tatler and the spectator to do this who is it is it samuel johnson nay he didn't write in spectator or uh, tatler is it john gay nay is it joseph addison or richard steel joseph addison richard steel which of them you two babies you have to tell it is joseph addison it is joseph addison very good guys the conscious lovers look at the an actment the conscious lovers it's a sentimental comedy written in five acts by the irish author richard steel richard steel ne likha tha kya nahi he may not have written is it true or false can we check ankita do you know it's true he wrote it yes it is true correct 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 guys you two babies are you loving this are you being entertained by these pictures and these details 
If you like the video, ding, 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 like a row, please. The 18th century was flooded with a huge number of magazines and periodicals and newspapers. Are who first used the word magazine? Is it Samuel Johnson, Richard Steele, Edward Cave or Nicholas Rowe? You have to tell me, you two babies, is it Samuel Johnson, Richard Steele, Edward Cave? Now, we don't know Edward Cave, do we? It was actually called Edward Cave's Gentleman's Magazine. Edward Cave is the correct answer. It was called Edward Cave's Gentleman's Magazine. Now, which work among the following was written by Johnson to settle the costs of his mother's funeral? Oh, so sad. Dr. Johnson did not have money to do his mother's funeral. And he wrote this book. This book shows some travelers. They are traveling across the Eastern world, Middle East. Who is it? One is a prince of Abyssinia. The other is his friend Imlac. Then there is a girl also. At which is the book? Is it London? The Vanity of Human Wishes? Rasalas or Hellas? Are Hellas is not even by Johnson. It is by Shelley. It is what? Ankita, Ankita is sleepy. Let us ask her rapid fire. Ankita. I think it's Rasalas. <coughs> she said it. It is Rasalas, the Prince of Abyssinia. Written to settle the cost of Johnson's mother's funeral. All right. Great. Who among the following coined the term four wheels of the English novel? If English novel is a carriage, there are four wheels. Richardson, Fielding, Smollett and Stern. Who said that? Samuel Johnson, George Sainsbury, Charles Dickens, F.R. Lewis. Ankita knows. Let us ask her or she'll sleep. I think it's George Sainsbury who had coined this term. Yes, George Sainsbury also coined another term, Ankita. Do you remember? The, uh, the university wits. Ta -da -da correct. George Sainsbury, it is. Are, kitna go, George Sainsbury, Grandpa. How are you, Grandpa? Okay. Robert Lovelace. Aye, can you believe this, Ankita, what I did? <laughs> Robert Lovelace is the villain in I, and I put Cla Clarissa's picture. No, we had to see Clarissa. Look, she's so pretty and so innocent. Robert Lovelace is the villain. He rapes her, Clarissa. Finally, this pretty girl dies. Clarissa is so full of morality that... French and German people praised Clarissa. Did you know that? How dumb of me, hai na, Cla uh, Ankita? <laughs> Are, who famously said, I describe not men but manners, not an individual but a species. He doesn't talk about one person, he talks about everyone. Samuel Richardson, Henry Fielding, Lawrence Stern or Tobias Smollett. It is... Tell me, Ankita. It's Henry Fielding. Right, you are Henry Fielding. Oh, this is from the movie, okay? Molly Seagram. Oh, that she also looks like me. Uh. <laughs> Such acting. Molly Seagram is a character in. Is it Tom Jones? Joseph Andrews? Pamela or Clarissa? I will tell you. It's a Picaros novel and the Picaro is... Giving Molly Seagram some love and warmth. Finally, she gets pregnant. <laughs> it is Tom Jones, the Picaras novel by Henry Fielding. You won't forget Molly Seagram, right? That's why we put the picture. The Adventures of Ferdinand Count Fathom is the prototype of a gothic novel by this innocent writer. He is looking so innocent, right? But it is not cantankerous. That is all the same. He was such a fighter with everybody he bought. <laughs> Is it Horace Walpole, Tobias Mollett, Lauren Stern or Matthew Gregory Lewis? I think it's Tobias Mollett. It is Tobias Mollett who wrote The Adventures of Ferdinand Count Fathom. It was an originally a gothic novel. The female quicksort. Or the adventures of Arabella. 
is a novel by Dash, imitating and parodying the ideas of Miguel de Cervantes' Don Quixote. Who wrote the female Quixote? Sarah Fielding, Charlotte Lennox, Frances Burney, or Eliza Hayward? It is, everybody knows, Mrs. Lennox or Charlotte Lennox, the female Quixote. All right. Sir Benjamin Bagbite, they close go. Is a character in She Stoops to Conquer, The Rivals, The School for Scandal. Sabek Jesa Lagra. Ah, I know in She Stoops to Conquer, it does not. She is not there. It is in the school for scandal. Sir Benjamin Bagbite is a dandy. It's a fop. Fop. Fop means stupid aristocrat. Huh? School for scandal. Who wrote school for scandal, Angita? Richard Sheridan. Richard Brinsley Sheridan is correct. The true born Englishman. Everybody is sleepy, Ankita. This is the last question. TK, you can also sleep after this. The true born Englishman is a satirical poem published in 1701. The Napurana must be some old man defending King William III, who was Dutch born. He was defending King William against xenophobic attacks by his political enemies. Who wrote this? Is it William Temple? Daniel Defoe, Jonathan Swift, or Henry Fielding? Ankita, you got to say this. Stop sleeping. I think it's Daniel Defoe who wrote this. Yes, Daniel Defoe's only one verse satire is there. The true born Englishman. Okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed this session. I hope you're reading on your own. I hope you won't forget. If you liked this session, let us know. All right. Bye-bye. We will come back tomorrow with more questions. One by one, we will cover everything. Okay. Together, we can do it. Thank you, guys. Join the Telegram group. It is in the description because I will give you P, D, Bolo Ankita? PDFs. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> okay, then. Bye-bye. Good night.